Welcome to Voices from the Valley, a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. I'm Amy Spreeman. And I'm Carolyn DeRosier. We often take dental care for granted. I know for me, I've always liked going to the dentist because I like the new toothbrushes and the mini toothpastes and flosses. I know some people have a horrible fear of the dentist. How about you, Amy? Well, I don't have a fear, but uh, every time I go, there seems to be some root <laughs> cause, if you will. So uh, there, there's always some drilling going on. So I, you know, uh, it, it's not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, there, there can be um, costly outcomes too. Um, well, if you have insurance, going to the dentist is one of those annoying but necessary trips uh, that can ease your pain and brighten your smile. Yeah, but not everyone has dental insurance, and paying out-of-pocket fees can be hundreds of dollars. Uh, it can mean cutting back on food or being late with rent or even paying other bills. So many people do choose to put off going to the dentist or even skipping it altogether. And for families with children who need cavities filled or an extraction, it puts parents in a real bind. It's estimated that there are over 85,000 people in the Tri-County area of Northeast Wisconsin who cannot afford even limited oral health care. The dental community wanted to do something about that. For the past two decades, volunteer dentists and dental hygienists have been offering their services free of charge through the Tri-County Community Dental Clinic. We recently sat down with Jeff Buckta, the executive director of Tri-County Dental Clinic, and here's what he had to say. All of our dentists are volunteers. We're one of the very few clinics in the country run by volunteer dentists. Most of them have paid dentists. Most families have a very difficult time finding a dentist who accepts Medicaid. For whatever reason, Wisconsin historically has been the lowest state in the entire country for Medicaid reimbursement. Roughly, we're at 20%. So if, if, a, if a dentist is charging $100 for a particular procedure, they would only get $20 returned from Medicaid. So most dentists are saying, I can't, that doesn't even cover my overhead, so I can't see Medicaid patients. Uh, according to uh, the Wisconsin Dental Association, about a third of the children in the state of Wisconsin have untreated tooth decay. They are not seeing a dentist in most cases and they're in pain, and they have infection. So we're, our goal is to try to reduce that and limit that. When we started this program in 2009, about 10% of the kids that we saw came in as emergencies. They had pain or infection. Through all of the work that we're doing and the education that we're providing and all of the treatments that we provide to children, we've got that down to about 3%. About 3% of the children that we see are in pain and suffering. So we really knocked that down a lot. There's a lot less kids walking around Fox Valley in pain. We run this clinic strictly on the generosity of our volunteer dentists and then the volunteer donors that donate money to the clinic. So we're very blessed to have such generous donors. That was Jeff Buckta, Executive Director of the Tri-County Community Dental Clinic. Several years ago, the clinic decided to hit the road and bring dental care to children in our community who need it the most. And they're doing it on a bus. Not just any bus, Carolyn, but a state-of-the-art dental clinic on wheels that goes to schools and nonprofit organizations that serve children. And they do this throughout the school year and over the summer, too. Tri-County Dental's mobile clinic is an extension of the clinic's free Robert Glass Focus on the Children dental care program, first started back in 2009. The program provides on-site dental care at schools, shelters, and youth organizations to ensure that all children in Outagamie, Calumet, and Winnebago counties have access to needed oral health care. A few weeks ago, I climbed aboard and watched in amazement of what these dentists could do with all the equipment of a regular dental clinic right there on that bus. And I met Kayla, Tri-County's lead dental hygienist. Here's what I heard. Do you brush your teeth every day, Braxton? Yeah. Do you brush morning or night? Morning. Morning time? Good. Morning's good. Now, actually, night time is just as important. My name is Kayla, and for the past seven years, I've been the lead hygienist at Tri-County Dental. Good job. Have a good morning. Right. Yay. Yay. 
So today we're at Hoover Elementary and we're doing cleanings and exams today. So two of our front operatories are going to be used for cleanings and then those children will get their teeth cleaned, get them kind of get a floor application, sealants if they need it. Um, and then in the back operatory we're doing exams um, where the dentist is taking x-rays, doing a full exam, kind of seeing what they have going on. So it's a busy day. The treatment comes in three different phases, starting with a basic exam. Phase one we completed at the beginning of September. That's where we we're trying to identify any emergencies, seeing if any kids have any infections in their mouth. Um, if there are any, any pain, we want to be we want to know that. So what we'll do is we'll call their parents right away and we'll ask them to come to our clinic and get those emergencies taken care of. Um, phase two is what we're doing today. Phase two includes the cleanings, exam, x-rays, fluoride, sealants, um, and that silver diamine fluoride that we've been really using a lot more lately. Um, so this is all phase two, and then eventually we move on to phase three, which is also done on the bus, our dental bus, um, and that's fillings, and if they need extractions and things like that. So that's phase three, but today we're focusing on phase two. Some treatment. What do you think about the bus, Braxton? It's good. Yeah, you like, what was your favorite part about the bus? Um... The x-rays were pretty kind of cool, weren't they? And you got to see them right away because they're all digital, which is cool. So you got to see your teeth. So Hoover, I want to say, is about 60 students um, involved this year, and numbers always vary because it's the parents who need to sign them up. Um, but that's a pretty average number for Hoover. So about 60 students out of this school that do come onto our dental bus, and that's part of the program. There's a, usually around 2,000 students um, through Oshkosh, Appleton, Nina. We go out to Seymour and Shiocton, Black Creek, and now Brilliant. So all those school districts, and we see all the elementary school students there. Um, so very, very busy. It's funny, when they go on the bus, a lot of times we give them a choice. Do you want to sit in the front, or do you want to sit in the back, or where do you want to sit? Well, last time I was in the front, so I'm going to sit in the back this time. Like, we're trying to give them the choice, and it's funny. Or I was with you last time. Can I be with her? Or, you know, it's just funny. Do you want a blue or green toothbrush? They get toothbrushes during phase one, and they get another toothbrush today when they get their teeth cleaned. So they now they have more toothbrushes available, so hopefully they brush more. And just a lot of interaction with dental professionals. You know, if, you're, if we're a constant reminder to them, because they're always seeing us at school, you hope that they will brush more and floss more and be a little more involved in their own dental health. What flavor did you pick when you had your teeth polished? Uh, bubblegum. Bubblegum? Did you choose bubblegum vitamins too at the end? Yeah, that's a popular flavor. Did you like having the movie? That was nice. Good distraction. That's always kind of fun. So our new mobile clinic here has a TV. And, well, they don't notice it right away until you lay them back and they're like, oh, my gosh, there's a TV and there's a movie playing. Right now I think it's Cars that's playing. Um, they have little headphones that they can wear, and they love it. They're so, and it's kind of nice. It's a great distraction to where you can just, you can work on them all day long, and they're just not phased. And it's just a nice break for them, a break from school, and it's just kind of a little more relaxing for them almost. Because people, kids especially, they don't always associate the dentist with something being fun. And now that they get to go watch a movie while getting their teeth cleaned, well, that seems a little more fun now. The bus eliminates transportation barriers for parents and families who may be struggling in many other aspects. A lot of parents don't have the time or the means to get their children to our clinic even. So having a mobile clinic that comes to their school is super helpful for the parents. Plus, when you take a child to the dentist appointment, you know, their visit might only be a half an hour, but the parent now has to go to school, pick them up, travel to the dentist, do their appointment, and then you have to drive them all the way back to school. You're interrupting their day, their school day, for an hour minimum. Here, they walk out onto their bus, get their teeth cleaned, seals, whatever they need, and come right back to school. You don't really interrupt their day for very long. Even with the exams, those children are out there for five minutes, and then they go back into school. So it's nice, it's convenient, I think, for the student and for their parents as well. With hundreds of children to examine and treat, this bus will put on many more miles in the weeks to come. As we head into the end of the year, the mobile clinic will be even busier than it is right now. So the mobile clinic's out about three days a week right now, but come November, our intention is to have it out five days a week um, and just be lining up all the schools. And So there's some organization to it, but... I mean, if we can have this bus out five days a week, that'd be incredible. I mean, we're just, we're so lucky to have this mobile clinic, and it's just so unique. And we've been doing this for so long now, I feel like it's pretty well-oiled that we, we do, we do well.
pretty amazing, Amy. You know, I'm thinking back to a conversation with Jeff Buckta about how important it is for kids to feel confident in their teeth and in their smile. It actually, uh, you know, has implications for their learning. So this is so important. Um, And this is actually the second bus for Tri-County Dental. The first bus got a lot of use, a lot of wear and tear, and it became obvious that a new bus was needed. So Tri-County Dental began looking for help from the community. And we here at the Community Foundation were excited to help. Yeah, one particular family with a fund here at the Community Foundation jumped at the chance to help Tri-County Dental with their brand new bus. More on that in a moment. We'll be right back. Do you want to make a difference in your community but not sure how or where to start? Do you feel strongly about a cause or an organization that touched your life or the life of a loved one? Want to help students attend college? Or perhaps you want to create a legacy and inspire others to give. The Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region is a great partner to help you make an impact now and for future generations. By simplifying your giving and helping you establish a tax-deductible charitable fund, you can set it up with cash, stocks, property, or IRAs, and you can do that now or in your will. It's easy. We share our knowledge and help you not only to make a difference today, but always. Count on us to understand the important community issues and help you consider effective ways to ensure our community is a special place for all to live, work, and grow. Because together, we flourish. With a fund at the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region, you can support causes important to you. Join others and learn how you can make a difference at cffoxvalley.org. One of the funds within our Community Foundation awarded a grant of $100,000 to make obtaining this new bus possible. Yeah, and what's really cool, Carolyn, is that all the donors in the community are listed on the sides of the bus, along with the smiles of the children, all in beautiful printed graphics. It truly is a gorgeous vehicle. Tri-County Dental wanted to thank its donors, and last winter, that bus came to the Community Foundation to thank us and give us a tour. Erin Shador was the program manager at the time, and here's what she had to tell us. The first thing that I'm going to show you guys is uh, one of the really great features of this. This, this is um, one of the best things for the staff. It used to take a good 15-20 minutes to set up and take down the bus every day. And this has an automatic startup. You push a button and it does everything for you. You don't have to do anything. Just stand there and let it do what it does. Um, this is truly a blessing for our clinic. Wow. And what's the big difference between the new bus and the older bus? Oh, what what isn't a difference? (laughs) (laughs) This is just, it is so beautiful to look at, first of all. The chairs are so much easier to set up and take down. It's very quick and things are just done for us right now, which in the past we would have had to take time out of seeing kids to put up and take down the bus every time. Just this walkway here is probably a foot wider than we had on the old bus. The dentist will go through and do exams on 80 kids, so they're moving between rooms, and having that extra space is really helpful. We are back and want to let you know that the new Tri-County Community Dental Clinic mobile bus is an amazing example of community need being supported by many generous donors in the community, including two donor funds within the Community Foundation. We can talk about that in just a moment. Uh, But the entire cost of the $650,000 mobile clinic was completely covered before the bus was even delivered two days before last Christmas just in time to help youngsters who had not seen a dentist for a very long time. So the need in the community is great. And uh, I am here right now with Anne Engelhard. She is the Vice President of Donor Services and Gift Planning here at the Community Foundation. Hello, Anne. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Amy. How are you today? We are doing great, and we're telling listeners on our podcast all about this incredible initiative. Uh, From your standpoint, uh, do you remember when you first heard about this need for the dental bus and how donors in our community foundation might be interested? Absolutely. Tri-County Dental has a long history in our community in providing 
free dental care to people that are qualified. Uh, Several years ago, I want to say it was probably about 15 years ago, they brought the first dental bus into our community, which goes around to the schools. And after a tremendous amount of use, Jeff, uh, the executive director, had been telling us that there was going to be a need for a new dental bus to be able to continue this program. And knowing what a difference it makes in our community, especially for youth, it was just paramount that we made sure we had funders lined up and ready to go. So while Jeff was working throughout the community, the Community Foundation was also very supportive of making sure that we could have the dental bus continue its work in the community. So one of the funds that um, the Community Foundation worked with their grant committee in understanding the need and knowing the services that are provided through the dental bus and what an impact it has on youth in our community was through the David and Rita Nelson Fund. And their grant committee or their advisory committee saw the need immediately as we presented it, and they were thrilled to be able to support this project. Oh, I I bet they were. And David and Rita Nelson are no longer with us. Uh, Going back a little bit for maybe some of our listeners who don't know uh, how this happened in, I believe it was 2018. Tell tell us a little bit about the story of David and Rita Nelson. So David and Rita Nelson um, were longtime community members of Northeast Wisconsin. And um, David was very involved in newspapers in Appleton, in Green Bay, and then also became very involved in radio stations and other businesses later in his career and was an amazing investor. Rita was a homemaker for many, many years and then went back to school um, after her children were grown and um, became a teacher and was actually a technology teacher for many years in the DePere school system. And when Rita and David passed, they had made provisions in their estate for the community to be the largest beneficiary of their estate. And much to our amazement, it was over a hundred million dollars that they gave to the community to ensure the quality of life in Northeast Wisconsin is protected and, and available and valued by all. Um, And so it has been an amazing thing to see, I think for our staff, for the community to understand that someone valued our region and the quality of life in our region so much that they left the lion's share of their incredible estate to ensure that Northeast Wisconsin remains a gem. Well, we're going to link up uh, the story and where you can read more about uh, David and Rita in our program notes for this episode of the podcast. So so the Community Foundation ended up establishing this fund with the Nelson family, and, and it's called the David L. and Rita E. Nelson Family Fund. And they do so much in the community, don't they? They really do. It is just an amazing fund to be a part of because you get to see not only the generosity of the Nelsons and what their um, forethought for our region does um, year after year, but you also get to see the impact, the impact on organizations such as Tri-County Dental, and then really the impact on individuals. And what does that mean to, to the individual who, in this example, you know, benefits from the dental bus? And there's many examples like that throughout the granting history. Although it's short, it's only about uh, four or five years old through the Nelson Fund, but it's already making an incredible impact, whether it's the playground at Highcliffe that was recently um, updated or in the Kakana area. There have been many projects, including the David and Rita Nelson Crossing. And there are just so many things that our community is seeing. And one of the things that the Nelsons really valued was also access to water and historic preservations and lighthouses. So you'll see a lot of work with the Nelson Fund up in the Door County area, which was also very, very important to their family. 
You know, there are a lot of projects like that, and the Community Foundation really understands where the needs are, and and, and it's part of the knowledge, I think, that our donor services area within the Community Foundation has kind of this this plethora of, of knowledge in our in our brains and our data banks. Uh, how does that help benefit people who who have needs in the community? I'll start off, Amy, by saying I have the best job in the world because it is very hard to be a pessimist and work at the community foundation because what we get to see is people who have intentions of making lives better for others by gifting, by giving their money, um, by looking at what the needs are and finding a solution that works for them and in their interest area. So um, the things we see are incredible. And so if a donor is interested in, in working with the community foundations, there's a variety of ways that you can do that. So you can support some of our work like through the Bright Idea Fund or the COVID-19 Community Response Fund. Those are general funds that anyone can give to. Another way that the community foundation works with in our region in making philanthropy available to all is with individuals who create funds. Using this example, like the Nelson family, um, David and Rita had decided that upon their passing, they would create this fund. So some funds are created as people um, in their estate plans and their legacy is carried on after they pass away. Other people establish their funds during their lifetime. And that's where the donor services staff works with the individuals to ensure that we understand what their charitable interest areas are, that we're presenting projects and programs that our staff know about, and that our our community knowledge really brings to them the ability to learn more about what is the community need at this point, or what is the community looking toward in the future. And we're able to help kind of work in that in-between space of making sure that the donor's intentions and a community need are matched. And it's amazing to see through the eyes of a donor. And we don't have to have millions of dollars like the Nelsons did. You don't have to actually be wealthy to start a fund, do you? No. If you're looking for an opportunity to learn more about what's going on in the community, donor advised funds are a popular giving mechanism. You can use cash. You can use appreciated stock. You can use a variety of assets and create a non-endowed donor advised fund, which allows you to use for a tax planning purpose. The gift into the fund is what you claim as your charitable deduction. And then the get the grants out of the fund, what, what people would say like gifts to organizations in the community foundation, we call those grants out to the organization. Those can happen over a period of time. So you can create a donor advised fund with as little as $1,000 to get started and to learn. Most people use a little bit more than that so that they can continue to replenish their fund over their granting. But that's where our staff really works to understand, you know, is it the environment that you're passionate about? Is it basic needs? Is it arts organizations? Is it parks? Is it recreation? There's so many needs in our community, and that's where we help try to uncover those projects and programs and make the fit with the individual donors. We have a page on our website that is uh, at cffoxvalley.org, all about creating a charitable fund and explaining what all of the flexible fund options are for people to you know, just go and explore and see if that might be uh, a fit. And uh, and I, I just really appreciate you coming on and explaining to people a little bit about how they can give back to their community. One thing I'd like to say is we are only capable of doing um, our work because of partnerships. It takes partnerships with donors who are interested and passionate about changing our community. It takes partnership with the nonprofit organizations who actually are making the impact in the community once the grants go out. And it's in partnership with all of the amazing volunteers throughout our region And without our partners, we couldn't do our job. So a big thank you to everyone who is part of that circle. Thank you so much, Ann Engelhard, for joining us. We will be right back.
That's going to wrap up today's episode of Voices from the Valley, a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we encourage you to subscribe to this podcast and get all of our episodes delivered to you on demand. Just go to our website, cffoxvalley.org. Look for the podcast link on our homepage, click on Podcast, and get Voices from the Valley delivered to your computer or smart device. And while you're on our website, we want to hear your voice. Leave us a comment and let us know if there are topics you'd like to hear in future episodes. Thank you for tuning in as we wrap up this episode. We'll see you next time on Voices from the Valley, a podcast of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region.